So as you say, the first first time you arrived there, I couldn't believe that here I was starring in the film mm. and coming to the studio and people were calling me so and doing things for me and and uh, of course, yeah, I couldn't believe it. A nice feeling. Oh, a very nice feeling, but a bit frightening. We saw your uh, leading lady there, Lana Morris, along with uh, Joan Sims. Was Lana nice to work with? Oh, yes. I was uh, not scared, but um, shy, if you like, mm. <laughs> of her at first, but she was so nice. She became very chummy. Well, I was here. I remember on one occasion, it was much later in the film, but I got a kiss even. And when I was exciting, oh. <laughs> I don't wonder. Look at us. Look at our colour. Look at Mix our Mix Jenkins time. now. What a mess. Yeah, Mix Jenkins. That's a sweet lady. You can't help me. Really lovely. Oh, that bike. So I can talk a bit about how you got the contract for Rank Films. How did that come about? Excuse me, officer. It's just that I was doing a show, uh, starring in a show, called Paris Piccadilly, at the Prince of Wales Theatre in London, and my agent, Billy Marsh, he came to me one day and said that the rank organisation would like to sign you on a seven-year contract. And I thought he was kidding. Could you direct me to suitcases, please? I really did. He said, no, this is true. They want to sign you on a seven-year... I said, seven-year contract? Oh, what a lucky little devil I am. Oh. I want to see my personnel manager. Yes, very exciting and wonderful. Come in. Good morning, Mr. Freeman. Good morning, Mr. Freeman. Put it down there. That's Moira Lister. I am Miss Drew. Yeah. Hello, Mr. Freeman. Oh, nice for them. Just a little cut. About 40 phone. years later, after this film, you did a radio show with her called Robin Hood, didn't you? Mm hmm. Was that fun to do? Oh, yeah. I rather fancy. Yeah, I don't remember a lot about it really because it wasn't much. Uh, but it was, it was good being with all these people again. And especially her, she was lovely, really. Like uh, no. South Africa, wasn't like she? That's right, yeah. To meet the humblest member of the staff at Burridge's. The humblest member. He too is a partner Played Tony Hancock's first girlfriend in Hancock's Half Hour on radio mm -hmm. in the first series. I think I know just uh. the person. Excuse me. It's a pleasure. Hello, stockroom, please. I'd like the whole staff to regard me as a father, so to speak. So did John yes. Paddy Carstairs, the director, take you to one side on the first day and, and talk you through well, what he wanted exactly you to do, or just let you get on stage and do it? Hello, stockroom. Yes? Yes, Miss Drew? Yes? It's difficult to recall, because, uh, you know, no, so many uh, people told me what to do and, geez, and how to do it, but uh, he was obviously one Please. of them. Me? Oh, no, I couldn't. But an interview with the chief might lead to anything. You know, they, they all Promotion. thought that it was my first film, or it seemed to me hmm. that they all thought it was my first film. Yes, but hurry up now, don't keep him waiting. Norman. And they were helping me. Your coat. And I appreciated it. Because <laughs> that helped to make me nervous. <laughs> and there's the grand Margaret Rutherford. There she is. Was she a little bit uh, scary to work with? It seemed to me. She seemed to be, uh, you know, I, I don't know, what would you call it, a bit, uh, well, well, higher, very high. Yeah. I don't mean tall, either. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it seemed to be that way, and I, I, I began to get sort of nervous of her. But, do you know, she was high because she herself was a bit nervous of me. <laughs> so she told me later that, you know. Well, you mean she seemed quite aloof to yeah, you, first of all? Yeah, yes, oh, yes. Come in. Yes, and she told me that, you know, she, did, she didn't know me and she was concerned about uh, what sort of a bloke I was. But um, 
I'm all over the It was place. an amazing thing. <laughs> you know, I used to like to have a, a, a because I didn't have time in the morning Cabinet. getting You're getting to the studio by eight o'clock, and I didn't have time to have any breakfast or anything like that. I used to rush off. Uh, and, but I used to have, all used to have a, a toasted bacon sandwich at about half past ten. I'll have a couple as well. And I'm about, after about the two or, th two or three days, or mornings rather, I was having my toasted bacon sandwich. And Margaret Rutherford seemed, I don't know, in some, some way annoyed about it. I thought she wasn't. Actually, she was jealous. <laughs>